Hey friends, what's happening? What's shaking? What's going on? This is Andy coming to you again from here at Andy's World of Bass. Today I'm going to continue on with this kind of series of videos that I've been making lately talking about the creative process. I recently formed a band called Funky Stuff and um, yeah, I'm writing a lot of I'm writing a lot of music and uh, I've always been kind of like really driven to the creative side of the craft. Uh, from the first time that I got my bass when I was 12 years old, like the second day I had my bass, I had written my first song. It was just a little bass line, but, um, you know, a couple notes in it or whatever. But, you know, I was drawn to the, the idea of making up my own songs, you know, from the very start. And pretty much the, the type of practicing that I do these days is always making something up. I don't necessarily, I mean, if I have to learn a cover for a performance or a session, then I do. Um, but I've kind of, uh, kind of just the, the time that I do spend practicing, I practice writing. I say, you know, how can I, I, I try and come up with a groove, a tempo and like, you know, create a little, um, song sketch arrangement. Like this will be the beginning the the A section. And then this can be the B section. And then hmm, how can I have a transition to get, get from A to B? And then, you know, how can I have a, some kind of new information section like a bridge and um, kind of assemble, assemble my creative ideas into the sketch of um, what can become a song and then take that to the band so that when we have writing um, session rehearsals where we're actually working on um, working up new original music, I have something to bring to the table and I can say, Hey guys, it goes like this. Here's the first part. Here's the second part. And then I thought, you know, and then I can explain to them. And then I also make videos of it so that I don't forget because with the creative uh, stuff, you know, it's easy to um, put some time into it one day and then come back to it the next day and be like, what did I do? So I try to, I try to make a video of it. So um, I have, I have hundreds of videos of song sketches that I've done and, um, that helps me to stockpile a bunch of creative material because as time goes on, um, if I'm get, getting ready to put out another record, I have four records out. If, I, if I'm getting ready to put out another record, I'll go back through all my song sketches and I'll say, you know, maybe pick the best ones that I think and, and try and that will fit into some kind of cohesive, cohesive album concept, depending on the instrumentation and the type of album that I'm trying to do. And yeah, put it together. So today I put this together and I'm just going to show you what I put together and the thinking that is, is going through my head when I'm assembling it. So the first section I played at the beginning of the video goes That's leading with a major triad on G 1-3-5 to B flat and then when I go to B flat I'm, I give it a distinctly minor flavor by doing that blue scale turnaround. So it's like And then I do these little, that becomes like a little figure, a little rhythmic figure that's going to kind of be repeated and, but done in different places. So that's kind of like the pivot. I call that the pivot. There's the pivot again. First time I did it there going between G, uh, F and F, F sharp and the second time I did it going between B flat and uh, B natural. So major triad on G. What I might do is I, on that pivot I might go something like I might bring it up an octave. That's where it would be. But I'll gliss into it. Back out of it. You know, those kind of 
kind of little things to really translate well onto recording and stuff that that becomes a really standout thing. You know, that glistening up and down, it gives a lot of like motion. It puts a lot of motion and movement in it um, and takes it out of all out of this first position where it's just kind of like defined pitches. I'll probably do that in the first section and then I thought um, for the B section I could shift uh, up a whole step and do like a unison or harmonized line depending on how we put it together but I'll do something like I was thinking of doing something like this so what I'm doing there is kind of out of the out of the A minor pentatonic which, which kind of is nice because if we're in the key of G, if we're calling it the key of G major it's it's kind of like uh, off of a off of a minor 2 chord um, and and with some hits so that's just that and then chromatically with like octaves you could even get cute and go change one pitch put that spooky pitch in there call that a spooky pitch because it takes it back to that really dark minory kind of thing and then I do this descending um, sequence descending kind of thing think about is duration and how long I'm going to do each each section and what I'm feeling is that the first time that it goes to the B section it's short it only does that sequence like like one time and then for a transition I was thinking I'd go and another one of those glissando kind of things from a half step below tonic so I'm just coming down with like some power chords from um, down from um, E flat D D flat C Right? And then that would get me back to the A section. discussion and a little bit of some examples of how I go about assembling a song sketch with the bass guitar as the primary writing tool. I've always used the bass to write on. I don't play piano and uh, I do play guitar but usually I write the sketch on bass and then pick up the guitar to work on some chords and melody if, if I go that way. But in a band situation in which is you know where most of this comes into play, um, I just write my song sketch on the bass, I bring it to the table, and then I let the guitar player make up the guitar part. Because one thing I don't like to do is, is create ownership of the entire music. Because it's so limited and so one-dimensional when it's all me. When all the musical ideas are coming from me, it's, it, it, in my experience, it tends to be the worst stuff. The best stuff that I've ever done has been collaborative. 
It's been where I just bring a nugget of idea of, 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 of the song to the table, and then I allow the other musicians to contribute to it. Then it becomes creative synergy, and that's where the real magic happens. Um, I don't like getting emotionally attached to every single element of what's happening musically in my songs. I like to surround myself with great musicians who I, who I love and who I trust, and, and, and I love the way they play, and then let them be themselves because it's always better that way. It's just in my experience. And, you know, I don't, and, and I know my limitations. Um, you know, I have limitations when it comes to understanding of harmony, when it comes to m m melody and um, me cr uh, melodic creativity and, 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 um, and harmonizing a melody. You know, I have, I have limitations. I'm, I'm kind of rooted in bass playing, in fundamental bass playing. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. It served me very well. So I like to um, let, let the guys whose job that is contribute that creative part of the music. And um, when, you know, it, it's, when you're in a band with the same people and you're working together, writing, rehearsing, and arranging music together, it's really possible. Um, if you're just kind of on your own making music and you don't really have people to regularly collaborate with and, and play gigs with, it's quite a, it's quite a bit different. It, it, it's certainly doable, of course, but it's just different. Um, I, I like being in a band. I like going to band practice. You know, I like to um, get together with the band and work up new songs together and create something that everybody has ownership of, that everybody has feels that, that, that has kind of equal, where everybody's carrying an equal uh, amount of the weight of the song creatively. Because I think that when it comes time to perform it, when it comes time to go out and be a band, everybody is that much more into it because there's not just one leader who's saying, you do this and you do that and you do this and you do that. Um, you know, that's just another dynamic that, that certainly exists in, in, in within the craft professionally. But, you know, hey, I like being in a band. So I always encourage people to find someone to jam with. Um, doesn't matter what their abilities are. If, you're, if your abilities aren't equal, um, you can still find some common ground and make some music together. And um, sitting around at home practicing is great because that's where you can get your own, um, your own um, thing going on. You know what I mean? Get your own technique and your own um, skills and confidence going. But really where the rubber hits the road in the, in the craft, in the, in the complete craft, I think it is, is in the rehearsal room in a band situation where there's a group of people, um, you know, it could be just one other person, it could be a duo, it could be a trio, it could be a quartet, whatever, all the way, um, where you're coming together and you're learning how to collaborate, learning how to compromise. I think that the, um, the greatest musicians are masters because they are master collaborators. They're able to fit into the fabric of music and the fabric of personalities and the fabric of human dynamics and make it work and you know that's why it's always so amazing when you see a band um, whether you love their music or not that's been together for 20 30 40 50 years and put out all these albums together the fact that they've been able to maintain the same people working together creatively and consistently putting out music over many many years it's so cool to me that is very very inspiring so, thank you for watching this video. Thanks for watching all the videos. I hope this might give you a little encouragement to, um, you know, to get creative and to start writing music if you're not already and bring some things to the table to your band as the bass player and get involved in the, um, in the writing process. Because if we want to talk, one last thing, if we want to talk about the business of music, um, I've never had a lot of success in the business of music. Uh, I've certainly made a living from it for a long, long time. But publishing and, and being a contributing writer to the music is really important because you maintain permanent ownership of that uh, intellectual property. You see what I'm saying? So if you are a writer on the song, you never know, 15 years from now, that song might turn into um, a check in the mailbox because you have um, partial ownership of that of that um, artistic um, material. So if, uh, if we just show up and just do what everybody else uh, asks of us, 
then we're getting a paycheck and we're going home and we need to be happy with that. If we um, contribute creatively to the process of the band, we're investing in our future, regardless of what happens with the band. All right, friends, we'll talk to you later. Peace.